Welcome to Phrases and Clauses. We're going to start out today with uh, Part A, which is going over phrases. And the types of phrases are prepositional phrases, which we've dealt a lot with, verb phrases, which we've also covered, and something that may just be review for you, a positive phrases. So what do phrases have in common in contrast to clauses? Well, phrases do not contain verbs, except, of course, in the verb phrases, which are made of verbs. And phrases cannot stand alone as complete sentences. Uh, that is the main distinguishing factor between phrases and clauses. Now, thinking about parts of speech now, let's review a little bit. On your notes, mark the subject, the verb, any prepositional phrases that you see, you can draw a line through them, mark your adjectives, and there's also a direct object that you can look for. Now, as a challenge, you can think about whether or not the prepositional phrases are adverb phrases or adjective phrases. Think about which questions they answer. So the puck sailed past the defender and over the crossbar. Take a moment now, hit the pause button if you need to, to mark your parts of speech. And then do the same for the Indy car from Jimmy Johnson's team crossed the finish line in a flash. Okay, when you're ready, go ahead and resume the recording, and here is your key slide. The puck sailed past the defender and over the crossbar. Here you can see that we have two prepositional phrases. They're underlined and in bold. We also have from Jimmy Johnson's team and also in a flash. Did you get those right? Okay, let's move on. You can check your other parts of speech there for review as well. AV, of course, stands for action verb, subject, adjectives, direct objects, prepositions. Okay, so you've learned about types of verbs. You've learned about linking verbs, helping verbs, and action verbs. You have to look for, sometimes, more than one verb. So, and then that's the case where you have a verb phrase. Now, if there are two verbs at two different places in the sentence, that's not called a verb phrase. But if they are joined together, like is sleeping, has been sleeping, will be sleeping, you can see that we have a combination of helping verbs and the action verb there. Now, a positive phrase is... Um, are something a little bit different. A positive is a noun that renames the noun, usually right next to it, and it, sometimes a, in a positive phrase is made up of more than one word. So we have Deanna, my neighbor, in a positive phrase, and my friend Laura, simply in a positive. We have Jason, my husband's cousin, and we have Edgar Allan Poe, a fabulous poet and writer. Now, if we were to have uh, a, another verb included in this, like Deanna, is, who is my neighbor, Laura, who is my friend, Jason, who is my husband's cousin, this is where we get into a clause because there will be a verb attached. And so just hold on to that thought. We'll come back to those. That's actually called a non-essential or, or restrictive clause. Okay, let's go back to these for just a moment here. You'll notice that there's no verb in the phrase. Often a positive phrases are set off by commas as well. And what about me? Made, made what for whom? Remember? Okay. Made cupcakes for me. Okay. And that of course was the direct object is cupcakes, indirect object is me. Okay, since there are no verbs in phrases, phrases cannot stand on their own. Find the phrases in the following sentences and identify the type of phrase. Josie, the redhead, likes Fred. Shaggy drives around the block in a, in a flowered van. Scooby has been looking for Scooby snacks during the entire show. Can you find the three different types of phrases in these three sentences? Hit the pause button if you need a moment to think about it. Otherwise, let's look at the key. We have in a positive phrase, two prepositional phrases, and finally a verb phrase and two more prepositional phrases. Hopefully you were able to identify all of those. Now we're going to move on to our clause section of the PowerPoint. That's a good point if you need to take a break. We have our dependent clauses, which are also called subordinate clauses or subordinating clauses, and we also have our independent clauses. But first, a clause does include a verb or a verb phrase, and it often contains a subject, although sometimes the subject is just implied. Take a look at the two types of clauses below. Independent clauses, 
dependent clauses. A good way to think about dependent clauses is if I were to run up to you in the hall and say, because I went to the game, or when I made cupcakes, I often leave you wanting more information. So it's clearly an incomplete thought and therefore an incomplete sentence because it's simply called a fragment, a dependent clause punctuated as if it were by itself. Now, independent clauses can stand alone. They do form complete thoughts. They do contain usually subjects, but always verbs. And we're going to underline these once. Take a look at the two samples. And notice that there's a predicate adjective, well, two predicate adjectives in the second sentence. <clears throat> now, dependent clauses cannot stand alone, and they do rely on an independent clause somewhere in the sentence. So we're going to underline these twice. Um, it, again, dependent clauses that are just punctuated as if they were sentences are called fragments. Okay, take a look at the three sample sentences. Notice that the dependent clause is underlined twice, and they can occur at different places in the sentence. They can be at the beginning, they can be in the middle, they can be at the end. Okay, can you tell the difference? Is it an independent clause or is it a dependent clause? Because of the late volleyball practice, it is always coldest before the dawn. When the cat played with the mouse, the wind blew through the trees, the car drove through the intersection. If you need to, hit the pause button, look at your note sheet, and then let's see if you can uh, figure out if these are ICs or DCs. And now we're back to see if you are correct. If I just walked up to you in the hall and I said, when the cat played with the mouse, and I ran away, you're left thinking, what? Also, if you just look at, for example, it's the second sentence, it is always coldest before the dawn. We have one subject, one verb, we have a predicate adjective in coldest, and we have a prepositional phrase. Uh, so we do have that as well. Uh, let's take a look at why this is all important. Well, first of all, we want you to create grammatically correct sentences. And to do that, you're going to need to be able to combine different types of clauses. You can start using semicolons in a couple of weeks if you don't already know how to use them. And using, knowing that dependent and independent clauses will help you to put that together better. And finally, you will avoid making the common sentence errors. Here is a 46-word sentence. Okay, well that's a pretty long sentence, but it is actually grammatically correct. Let's take a look at these sentences. It paused, it hit the pause button if you need to, but I want you to look and see, is the bolded segment of the sentence independent or dependent? Hit the pause button now and put down your answers. Okay, now that we're back, take a look and see if your answers were correct or not. Um, if, I, if you just walk up to somebody in the hall and say that Jan could not attend Steve's party, just keep in mind, you don't mean that Jan. You just mean that Jan could not attend Steve's party, and it's clearly an in incomplete thought. Okay, moving on, a preview of what not to do. Um, our next unit, Unit 6, will cover all of these, but fragments, comma splices, and run-on sentence run sentences are... Um, Construct sentence constructions that are done in error. Um, it's a very amateur mistake, and we're going to see if we can eliminate them from your writing. Here we go. Identify the bold clauses as ICs or DCs. Hit the pause button, work your way through the note sheet, and um, then check your answers. Hit the pause button now. Okay, and we are back. See if you had the correct answers. If not, make a few notes, ask some questions in class. Hit the pause button again if you need to. And finally, have we met our targets? These are the targets of our unit. And as you can see, these are really important aspects so that we can improve our writing. Thank you.